Today we will discuss about machine learning AI model called Decision Tree Classifier and how we can apply that to S&P 500 to get a pretty decent return, beating the S&P 500 by a whole CAGR to maximum drawdown ratio. So let's start with what a decision tree model is. So a decision tree model is basically just like anything that we do in our day-to-day -day lives. Like we make a decision which movie to watch, uh, what shoes to wear, where to uh, go out, things like that. So all those things are basically decisions. And even though we're not specifically breaking it down one by one consciously, we are making a decision based on something maybe subconsciously. Uh, so let's break it down what a decision tree is. Just think about a normal tree. So I'm going to select this normal tree and you've got this tree, uh, I've got the branches and everything. And if you tilt it down, and that's basically the structure of a decision tree. So uh, just like a normal decision a tree, you have like lots of branches and the branches will have leaves and all those things. So let's take a simple example. We'll, we'll talk about this in movies. So um, don't be worried about the complexity of this. So as of now, just like we talked about before about the genre, uh, let's decide about a genre of a movie which I am going to watch today. So for me, the priority today is to watch an action movie, but I don't mind watching a combination genres, you know, like an action plus comedy or things like that. Uh, so the first thing that I will do subconsciously, and this time we're breaking it down in a decision tree. Uh, so it's a genre action. So if it is yes, uh, then the other question is, is the duration greater than two hours? Then if it is yes, then watch the movie. If not, skip the movie. Now, is the genre action? Then no, I'm not watching the movie. Uh, is the genre action and yes, is the genre comedy? Then yes, then does it have an Oscar winning actors? Then I decide to watch the movie. If the genre is not comedy, I am skipping the movie. Similarly, we go to the is the genre drama section and then you can see, does it have an Oscar winning actress? Uh, and then if it is, then choose the movie. If it does not have an Oscar winning actress, I'll still watch it if the duration is greater than one and a half hours. Uh, so then I choose the movie. So this is basically the structure when I go to Netflix and watch, when I break it down subconsciously, this might be the structure on how I make a decision to watch what kind of movie. And that's pretty much how the decision is made when you guys watch a movie as well. So. Let's break it down what all these things does. So the first thing is called a root node. So the first question asked, first decision made, that's the root node. And in this case, it's a genre action. And you see all these yes or no things, just like a tree, those are called branches. So you can see multiple branches here. You can see branches there. You can see branches here. So these are all branches. And you see the things in between. Uh, that's called intermediate nodes. So you've got like, is a duration greater than two hours? Is a genre comedy? Uh, is a genre drama? So these are all uh, intermediate nodes. And then finally, when you decide whether the movie is chosen or we're skipping the movie, so both conditions are all leaf nodes. So leaf nodes are the ending part, uh, the final point of the decision of the decision tree. So just like we decide on how to choose a movie, we can also decide uh, whether to enter a specific stock at a specific time or not, whether to buy or sell a specific stock. So you see all these intermediate nodes, they're also called input features uh, or input variables. Um, so when a machine learning model, you're gonna feed all these things, you're gonna feed the uh, input features and the machine trains on these input features to make a decision uh, and that we check to the target and see whether it works or not. So instead of here, comedy or duration or Oscar winning actors and things like that, we can actually feed other things. We can actually feed, um, you know, the RSI or volume or price change and all those things. And that will be huge. And depending on what kind of input features you feed, you can get a good result out of it. So sometimes you can feed a lot, sometimes you can feed too little. Uh, so too little and too, too much can be issues because a machine can't learn very well to understand, uh, to make a good decision. Uh, so depending on what features you, you put in, it can make a good decision. So for example, if I'm feeding RSI, uh, there's no point in me feeding something else. There's no point in me feeding uh, stochastic. Okay, so RSI might be more than uh, good enough. So similarly, if I do, uh, let's say volume, then there's no point in me doing on balance volume either uh, because we've already fed something uh, volume related. So it depends on what kind of things you do. So if I'm doing like SMA, uh, then there's no point in me doing you know, 50 SMA and 100 SMA and 200 SMA. The machine learning will kind of figure out uh, what to understand from these from patterns from these input features and sometimes you can think out of the box ideas you know and that's that's what we discuss in the course as well like out of the box input features so the, so the quality of the input features kind of 
makes the machine learning model predict much efficient. So sometimes you can even feed other price data. So uh, let's say you're, you're trading S&P 500, then putting in the gold data, the crude oil data can be, uh, can be quite beneficial because different times of economic situations, the crude oil prices are going up or gold prices are going up. That's a sign uh, of inflation. All those things can help you uh, in making good decisions, uh, can help the machine learning model make good decisions. So you don't have to put in all of them, but putting in some of them would be a pretty good idea. Yeah. So the other thing becomes a target variable. So what are we targeting? Are we targeting the next day's uh, position? Are we targeting the uh, five day uh, return? And then there's also what are the training? So we, we've decided the input features. So these are going to be the input features. Uh, and then the question becomes, uh, hey, uh, how many days of input features do you want to feed in? So do you want to just feed in like two days data or five days data or 10 days data to predict the next day? Uh, and things like this. So these are all the things that, which is in your hand and you feed all this information uh, to this massive uh, machine learning model and they will make a decision finally to go, uh, whether to go uh, long on the stock or short on the stock. Uh, and that will be our trading data. But trading data is just one thing. So training doesn't mean anything. Uh, we've got the trading data and we need to test it somewhere. So uh, that's why we need to have a completely different time frame of testing. So we have done 2010 to actually it's 2024, uh, not 2010, uh, 2020. Uh, so we're gonna do training and testing in two separate time periods. So uh, this is a, a normal default way of uh, testing uh, trading strategy. So the other model is called the rollover training data. So in this case, which we will train with the most recent data and we'll keep on rolling it. So for example, uh, five year rolling window. So that will be 2000 to 2005. And then when 2005 reaches, while well, we are testing data will be 2005 to 2007. And when 2007 reaches, we are gonna change it to the most recent five years. So it will be from 2002 to 2007 that will be the trading data, and then we'll test it on 2007, 2009. So, so the advantage of that being that you are only taking in the training of the most recent data. You are trying to ignore what happened uh, in the past. So there are different approaches in training and test testing data, which we discussed thoroughly in the course. Uh, but here we're gonna make it simple. And I kind of like the 2000, 2010, because there are multiple black swan events. There is the 2008 financial crisis, and there's also the 2001 dot-com bubble. So these are all uh, great events for you guys to uh, test and train uh, your machine learning model. So when that big event comes in, like for example, with 2020 or the past few years of volatility, uh, the strategy is well trained. The AI model is well trained to perform well during those volatile moments. Um, so that's pretty much what a decision tree is. I'm not going to go much deeper in it because there's lots of things to go deep into it, which we can't uh, put it in one shot YouTube video. Um, with, however, we have discussed it thoroughly in a hyperparameter tuning in our course. Uh, so let's go into the code section. So before we go into the code section, this code. Uh, which we will discuss here. Um, so this code is run on Quant Connect and we have coded it using Python. Uh, so let's go into the strategy. So basically we have the libraries, so we've got the scikit library and the decision tree uh, classifier and we're also gonna import standard scalar. Uh, and we are gonna use the testing data as 2010 to 2024. The training data will be from 2000 to 2009 to uh, December 31st. That will be our training data. Uh, and then we're gonna import obviously the data of SPY. So another thing is that if you don't know anything about Python or anything about Quant Connect, uh, you can watch our video on algorithmic trading in Python, full tutorial, it's got half a million views. Uh, so that should get you equipped with Python. Uh, and then you can actually watch the video on Quant Connect um, Zero to Hero as well. So that kind of gets you up to speed uh, in the Quant Connect platform as well. So the, the advantage of Python and Quant Connect is that Quant Connect is like a one-stop solution. So you can actually code this back to this and you can actually go live. Uh, you can integrated with the interactive brokers pretty easily. Just put in the username and password and you're ready to go live. So it's kind of really convenient facility for anybody out there. Um, but anyways, let's go to the code. Um, so again, we are actually using a warm up function. So basically what it does is that it waits for 200 periods uh, before um, the trading is done so that we've got all the data necessary to train. Uh, and we're doing a look back where, so remember I told you how many days do we need to train the features for? So that's the look back where we have done. So we've done 10. And for the feature count, we have put two. Uh, so in this specific situation, I'm only using two features. You can add more features, you can reduce more features, but I don't, I don't recommend you just using one feature, but uh, the more features you add, the more 
overfit your strategy can get. So these are some of the tiny nuances which we discuss in the course. Uh, but again, the quality of the feature is more important than the number of features. So for example, here, uh, when we did it, you know, the quality, the duration makes an important factor because when I'm watching a movie, I don't want it to be too uh, too short, but I don't want to be too long either. And I also want to make sure that, uh, you know, it's some quality actors in there. And that's why I've I've selected the Oscar winning actors and everything. The genre makes an important uh, uh, situation as well. So before we continue with this code, this specific strategy is available in our machine learning and AI strategy course. Uh, so we're going to add this strategy strategy again. This is an additional decision tree strategy. So total is going to be eight machine learning AI strategies. Uh, so we discuss different kind of AI strategy from neural network, requiring neural network, long short term memory. Uh, we also do complicated uh, AI models like Markowitz portfolio optimization. And all these strategies, uh, our goal is to beat the S&P 500 CAGR to maximum drawdown ratio. So uh, we teach about portfolio rebalancing. So not only can you create strategies using AI, you can also create an AI which rebalances balances your portfolio. Uh, so we discuss a strategy based on that as well. And then uh, we discuss hyperparameter tuning. So this decision tree itself has got different kind of uh, hyperparameter tuning, like maximum depth, you can uh, change the depth of it. Um, and then we can combine multiple AI models. So that's one of the things that so we've combined RNN with, uh, I think as support vector machines. So we combine two machine learning models together uh, to get superior results as well. So there's also an individual challenge. So each time you finish, like for example, let's say you finish a, a recurrent neural network, there will be a quiz. And there's also a challenge for you to create your own strategies. And we'll kind of guide you, we'll kind of tell you, do this, 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 based on what the strategy we taught you. So you can create your own uh, strategies and learn much better. Uh, so there's also quizzes. So this will be, uh, for example, this year is a quiz on decision tree, is a quiz on um, the neural network strategy. So so that you kind of understand after the course video and the strategy is discussed on what is it, for example, what is a vanishing gradient problem are and then how to sort out this issue. So you will understand all these things when you do uh, specifically the course. Um, and the videos, and then you can learn much better. So the quizzes are there uh, to make you understand the content much better so that you can work on hyperparameter tuning and all those tiny details which you need to adjust. Uh, now coming back to the code, uh, now we are going to import the standard scalar function from the library. We're also going to import the decision tree classifier uh, from the library. And here we have just set a default thing. So there's more complicated decision tree classifier, which we will discuss uh, in the course with the maximum depth and things which we can uh, fine tune or hyperparameter tuning. That's what's called. Uh, and then this is just a trade execution flag for us to uh, check whether we have entered or exited the trade. Uh, and this is the empty array that we will create, which we will store it uh, for our features list, for a list of our features, and also the targets, because we are aiming to target uh, a specific condition, right? Is the market performing better tomorrow or not? So that's our target. Uh, and then we create our own decision tree function, um, self.train decision tree, which we are called. So here is the decision tree function. And we are taking the train decision tree, we're taking the history of the 2000 to 2009 um, timeframe. And then we if the history is empty, so if you've got no data, we're going to check and then there's no historical data available for training. And then we're going to create two empty arrays for features and targets. Uh, and then we are going to get uh, another function, get features from history, which I'm not going to show because if I show it, then basically you guys know what the input features are. Uh, so the input features is where your real uh, strength lies, as I, uh, the quality of the input features. Uh, so therein we will get all the data and then we are going to feed, we're going to append this data and then we are going also to get the target. So target is a day after the 10 days to see whether we are in a positive or a negative. Um, and then we are going to convert the one day array to 2D arrays uh, using np.array and then we're going to store it to features and targets. Uh, and then we're going to scale our fit. And once we scale our fit, we are going to train the decision tree using clf.fit, which is what we did here. Uh, we initialize the decision tree classifier and we're going to fit it. And that will give us the, the train data of the decision tree. So now the decision tree is trained. Now we just have to execute it with new data. And that's what happens in the on data function. And we're just going to warm up and we're just going to make sure everything is ready. The moving average is ready uh, and the SPY contains the data uh, and all those things. And then we are going to 
uh, get the scalar transfer of the features and also the prediction probability. So we're going to use prediction probabilities. Uh, so we're going to have a specific value, like if the probability is greater than 65%, then we're going to enter and things like that. Uh, and then I'm not going to go uh, more lower because that's where the entry and exit conditions are. That's also something that I want to keep it uh, hidden, uh, except for the students who are interested in the course, then the strategy is available uh, in your course material. So I'm going to show you two of the strategies. So the first one, we have just used this one. Uh, and we have got a CAGR to drawdown ratio of 9.5 to 21. So uh, let's do the mathematical calculation. So an average CAGR for SPY is 10% and the maximum drawdown is 55. So CAGR to maximum drawdown ratio S&P 500 is 0 0.18. Uh, so our goal is to beat this number. So any strategy that can beat this number is extremely crucial. So for example, this one, we've got 9.5. Uh, divided by 21 and we have got 0 0.45 which is actually extremely superior uh, as compared to the S&P 500 buy and hold and the reason why it's superior is you can apply a tiny bit of leverage so for example to 9% combined annual return you can actually apply uh, 2 is to 1 leverage and get 18% and still the drawdown will be just 42% or 43% which is significantly lower than the S&P 500 CAGR uh, to maximum drawdown of 10% to 55% so our goal is to improve the CAGR to draw and ratio so that's our job as quants to improve our reward but by reducing as much as risk as possible the maximum risk uh, the maximum drawdown reduce it as much as possible so the beauty of quants is just this is just one exit strategy which we used I'm not going to give out the whole idea of exit strategy but we're using the SMA uh, 9 and one of the conditions of the exit strategy and I just changed one small thing in that and the next thing you know, we've got 10.77 with a 21% drawdown, and that is huge. So that is like 10 divided by 10.7 um, divided by 21.6, that is 0 0.49. So you can see the ability for us to improve, and there is more alpha to be generated. I've just put in two input features, but the quality of the input features is pretty decent enough. Uh, one of them is outside the box. It's not similar to uh, any of these things that I've discussed. It's completely outside. One of them is uh, one of these things, and the other one is completely different uh, input features that I have selected. So depending on the quality of the input features, um, the strategy's performance can improve as well. So, uh, and by the way, this strategy has also got like higher number of trades. You know, the total number of orders is 2,113, and that is a bit high. Uh, so you can work in reducing that as well. So uh, here, for instance, the fees is $9,000 and that is uh, quite high. Uh, but the final result is with the fees uh, taken out and still we have got a pretty decent return. But but again, there are lots of improvements to be done in this strategy alone. So um, hopefully you enjoy this video. So if you want to check out our course, then obviously you can visit our uh, website and uh, let me know if you have any suggestions uh, anything more that you want to uh, me to create because this entry is one of the first um, machine learning slash AI model we'll be discussing but in my YouTube video uh, but in the course there are many other models that we'll be discussing um, so uh, hope you understood what a decision tree model is and how it works thanks so much for watching bye bye